Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Test Drive Unlimited PlayStation 2 Edition. Today is episode number 19. If you guys do want to keep up to date with the TDU PS2 series, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And also, don't forget to check the description for our social links. We have Twitter, Discord, and Instagram. But hopefully you guys do enjoy today's video. Right, so now we have a house towards the very north of the map. What we can do is actually, we don't live that far away for- Oh no, we've run out of free upgrades. That's not good. Uh-oh, this is going to be a hefty dent to the bank balance. There we go, 100,000 credits gone. Oh, there was no more free upgrades. Uh, I will admit I did just use a free upgrade on the uh, Lamborghini Miura. So uh, that's my own fault. <laughs> um, so what we're going to be doing... Uh, we'll take that. Uh, key locations. We want to look for clubs and... Actually, no. We need everything. There we go. Uh, so we're going to be going here. We're also going to fast travel here. To our house. And then we're going to drive out, of course. Awesome. Because we need to give the uh, caterham a little bit of a test drive first. Give it a try. And then we'll win. I think You're this is one of the club races that I do remember very well, taking me a while. So, um, let's see how well it goes. Hopefully it goes a little bit better than I remember it going. Your destination is one mile away. This car is quick, though. I will say that now. We're going to get uh, police trying to chase us. There you go. Pull over immediately. Nope. Not a chance. Okay. Oh, no. Never mind. We've gone off the road there. Let's uh, onto the brakes. Turn right. I'm sorry. Not. Uh, so this club is exclusive just for this individual vehicle. Uh, but there is only uh, one caterham in this game. As far as I remember. Oh, nice fancy club. Fancy club for a fancy car that has no roof. <laughs> Here we go. Six Caterham CSRs, two 60s that we have to go again. So let's go against the first one then. Just get straight into it. Awesome. Here we go. We're going against a red one first of all. And off we go. The fact that everyone is in sort of a similar car, um, I have a feeling we're going to be challenged, but not to the point of being impossible to win. At the next intersection, turn left, turn left. Okay, there we go, nice. I wonder what happens when you win this. Because I cannot remember for the life of me what actually does happen. Nice. We're going really quick for this club. Top speed may not be there, but we definitely have the acceleration. 43 seconds for the first race, 3,000 credits. Ah, oh, that's such a big dent that we made. We bought a giant house with a 10 car garage. Uh, if we didn't um, sell that other house, we wouldn't have been able to get this upgrade. We would not have been able to afford that upgrade. Because that upgrade was 100,000 credits and we got 90,000 for the house. Let's do this. We're going to get to Yellow Caterham this time. The one thing I love about the Caterham as well is it's one of the few cars in this game that has a very bright, vivid colour. And it's really nice. I feel like, though, if they do put clubs in um, TDU Solar Crown, they're going to have to have, like, a Reliant Robin in the game and have a Reliant Club. 
That is like the most famous car owners club ever. Because people who have a Reliant Robin are passionate about it. Perfect. There's the finish line there. Look at that. 51 seconds. 3,000 credits. <laughs> there is literally no reward whatsoever complete in these races. Like, that would have been a lot of money at, like, episode 1. But we are now, like, episode 15, 18, I don't know. Post-editing stuff. It's not a lot. Here we go. Now we've got a uh, green caterer. Are we starting at the exact same point every single time? I hope this race is a bit longer. 2.2 miles. So it is getting a bit longer each time. But like, we're starting at the same spot, I swear. Okay, that's not good. It's the first time we've crashed uh, in front of the club owners. nice come on perfect gotta get a bit more comfortable in my chair oh no off road a bit ah uh, probably should have waited till i finish this race before moving let's do this ah oh, this car is awesome there's another v rent over there I think we might have gone past that V-Rent though, didn't we? On the way here. Or on the way to buy our house. There we go though. That's another race done. One minute and six seconds that took to complete. And 3,000 credits. Awesome. Really, really am looking forward to uh, finishing this game. There we go. Right, we've got a uh, darker blue Caterham as well that we're going against now. Are we the lighter one or the darker one? We're the lighter one. Awesome. 3.1 miles for this race. Bit of a corner cut. Definitely a bit too much off-road in there. Okay, way too much off-roading. Come on, stop it. This is just... Entire race is just with a caterer. Caterer versus caterer. Pure driver skill. Something that I definitely do not have. There's the finish line coming up. How long did that take? 1 minute 29.25. 5. Don't forget the extra 5. 8,000 credits for that. Fair enough. That is very decent. How many credits are we going to get for this race? These races are definitely getting longer and longer. 
This is where we find out the final race is like 0 0.6 miles or something like that. And it's just like, you gotta be quick off the line or you failed. That would be funny. 2.3 miles. This is shorter than the last one. If I... <laughs> get wrecked. Very good. Not very good. Take a penalty here. Take a penalty. Oh, close. thing is, and the thing that I prefer about this game, is you sort of slide around corners very much. Like, that's sort of your way of getting around corners, whereas TDU on the PS3, you sort of drive around corners. I know that sounds weird, but like, I prefer the drifting around corners for this game, because it's just smooth. And the way you drive around corners on TDU 1 and 2 for console the higher up consoles, it's just not smooth, not smooth whatsoever, there we go though, that was a good finish there, 1 minute 14.545, good, and 7,000 credits, let's see what the final event has to offer, another catering, <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to make that joke. <laughs> what does the final event have? Another caterer. Here we go. And the final caterer is an orange one. How long is this race going to be? 2.1 miles. Okay, fair enough. This definitely hasn't been as painful as I remember it being. I remember this being an absolute nightmare. So unless there's like another event that I just don't know about. That was an absolute me nightmare. Because I remember there being a caterer as the high boss. And it was a nightmare to beat him. And I was in a caterer as well. My memory's a bit fuzzy, apparently. Oh, not good. Not good. Not good. That's it. We're out. Brilliant. Let's just retry straight away. Ah, oh, That's why I remember saying in one of these episodes that I hate and worry about crashing head-on with a car because it throws you off. And it really does, as you saw there. That threw us off big time. We went flying off the track. There was no recovery for that at all. Alright, come on. On the road, nice. We're miles ahead. Not good. Reverse, reverse. Woo. You are driving in the wrong go forwards, go forwards. That was a close one. But there we go. Congratulations, your next vehicle upgrade is free. Well, it's a bit late. We spent a lot of money on this car now. <laughs> 100,000. Lot of money. I'm broke. I've only got 40 grand now. Well, that's it. We are the president now of the Caterham Club as well. Right, so it is a new day. A new recording session. Uh, and today, we are going to start off with... Uh, some championships. Uh, now that we're at the north, oh, 
run out. Not ideal. This car is a little bit too lightweight. Um, but now we are at the north of the map. We can actually do the lower level championships that we couldn't quite reach before. Um, so this is fairway views. Um, oh, that's a map. Nice. It's a picture of Hawaii. Um, so yes, we can do this one now. Which is uh, a championship for D-Class vehicles. Um, I feel like I want to drive something else. Because we always drive the Skyline. We haven't driven the Cadillac yet. And to be fair, the difference isn't too bad for the Cadillac. So I feel like we could drive that for a bit. Uh, so let's go. Nice. I think there's actually another Cadillac as well. Yeah, there is. Turn our lights on. Be fancy. Oh, this thing feels like a tank to drive. But it is a good drive. It's decent to mix it up as well. Like, these kind of games, you can't just drive the same car over and over again. You get bored. So you mix it up. I think that's why I got sort of bored of Forza Motorsport 4 when I played it um, as a kid. Because 4 didn't reward you as much as 3 did. and Or reward you with any decent cars. And I just ended up playing the same thing over and over again. Got bored. Quite quickly. And also I got bored because I didn't get the Bugatti Veyron, so that's another factor. I used to just play that on free play all the time. Bugatti Veyron. I wish the Veyron was in this game. But, uh, I mean, I understand why it's not. The Chiron needs to be in, um, Solar Crown, though. That's, like, the pinnacle of... Hypercars at the moment, luxury hypercars. It's the Bugatti Chiron. We have started this uh, session off at being 35% completed. Um, so, and as of recording, I think this is episode 19. So, 35%. I think this is going to take probably about 50 episodes, but bearing in mind the later race is also really long. Might be even longer. 60 episodes, 70 episodes. This could be bigger than Gran Turismo 6 series. It could be bigger. And if it hit, if it is, I probably wouldn't even complain either. Because I quite like this game. But uh, at the moment, Gran Turismo 6 is my longest series. There we go. Chip and Run has been unlocked. Are these all like uh, golf references? Because you got fairway. That's like the middle section, isn't it? I think. Chip and run. There is definitely a golf theme to this. Uh, so we are going to be getting 11,500 credits for this. And 0 0.9 miles per lap. If this is like an entire championship just around golf courses around the island. Yeah, look at that. There's a golf course over in that direction. Hang on. Where is it? There you go, see? Golf course. <laughs> uh, I beg we drive on the golf course. I don't think you can actually get to the golf course. Um... That's another good thing about Test Drive, though, is the uh, freedom in the map. Um, even though it seems very closed off and very sort of road-based. What are you doing? What on earth was that? Um, even though it is sort of road-based, very much roads, 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 um, you still have the freedom that you can drive off the road. There are, like, that section there. In front of this corner, if you were to technically corner cut, 
Uh, that is all off-road section you can drive. It wouldn't be good, but you can do it. And it's that kind of freedom in a game that you didn't see back in the day. There wasn't really open world to that extent. Horizon 1. That came out a year after the second game of this series. And six years after this exact game. Still didn't have any sort of open world aspect as a such. You could only stick to the road. There were invisible barriers that stopped you from going off the road. And what has Test Drive Unlimited got? Freedom. 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 Those, those are sort of like songs that as soon as you say the word, it's like... That pops up into your head instantly. We're nearly at 750,000 massa points. Uh, which will be the point at which if it's with uh, it will be the point at which it will tell us if we've leveled up at 750 or we're gonna level up at a million here we go across the line nice the bunker has been unlocked yes that's just proven everything it is all golf puns okay let's go to the next event There's got to be a race called 4. If there's not a race called 4, then I'm uninstalling. Actually, I don't need to uninstall. It's all running off the disk directly. That's another cool thing. No installation of games, but games can still load fairly quickly. And if you want to change a game save, there's no old messing around with accounts and stuff like that. Oh, I've accidentally pressed that button. Oops. Uh, there was no messing around with that. Just swap a card and you're done. You want to take play your game and show your friend all your cards. Well, you can't do that on Xbox One unless you're, like, signed in. Xbox 360, you had to take a massive hard drive. And sometimes, if you've managed to save your save on the memory unit, because uh, a lot of older Xbox, the modern one, like the 4 gigabyte one, had a memory unit thing. Uh, if you manage to save it on there, you can get it off. Well, I haven't worked out how to get it off. It's just a nightmare. Whereas this, you just take the card, you literally just pull it out, plug it in. No messing around, all sorted. Obviously now, 20 years on from the PS2 being released. Jeez. Is that how old the PS2 is? 2000. Oh, shit. But even then, 20 years on, as much as maybe the memory card thing would be a bit pointless and not really a selling point to get a PS2, it's still even useful for, like, replays and stuff like that. If you're playing Gran Turismo and you've got replays, you can swap out different cards. As soon as one fills up, you swap it out, put another one on, Especially if you're like a YouTuber and you get thumb... Obviously, my thumbnails are all simple because I make so many videos. Um, and I sort of have a very specific style. I don't really like stressing myself too much with thumbnails. I am going to start experimenting with changing up the thumbnails a bit. Um, because... I feel like the next series I do will definitely need that. Um, if I do do Gran Turismo 4, probably will want to mix up the thumbnails. Because having like 100, 200 videos, because that's how many videos Gran Turismo 4 will take. Guaranteed. If I do Gran Turismo 4, longest series, longest series it, that I'll ever have. Um, but I will need to mix up the thumbnails because it will get boring very quick for an entire year of just the same thumbnails but here we go dog leg has been unlocked okay we're at 751,000 and we haven't uh, gotten anything so I think it is a million before we get um, leveled up 
Here we go, though. 13,000 credits for this one. Dog leg. I don't know this as a golfing term. Um, if anyone knows what dog leg means, uh, let me know. But uh, I presume it's some form of, like, golfing term based on the fact that every single other track has been a golfing term. So, yeah, it would make sense that way. Would make very good sense. What are you doing, Mercedes? Get out of my way. I'm a posh guy in a posh car. And I'm a drive you off the road. I'm a posh guy in a posh car. At the next intersection, turn left. Turn left. Oh, this is a longer race. Awesome. At the next intersection. Cars behind it are uh, catching left. up a little bit. Not too much of a problem for me. Ah, okay, there we go, nice. Turn right. I'm still impressed by how, like, these kind of games were actually made back in the day. They had so many restrictions back then. That they couldn't be as creative as they wanted to be. And yet, Test Drive still managed to be a very creative, a very full, fun game. Same with Gran Turismo 4. On 8 gigabytes, they made a massive game. Very fun. Very enjoyable. A little bit frustrating at, at times. Found that out last night. <laughs> but, overall, decent game. Nowadays, we have no restrictions on what we can do. Like, you can do whatever you wanted as a game. Most consoles will be able to run it. There are a couple of games that are pushing the boundaries of those, and that is like massive games like Cyberpunk and that. But we've got new consoles coming out soon. As soon as the new ones come out, you'll probably have no restrictions for the next five years on what you can create with them. memory might be a problem. Not like uh, RAM, but like storage. RAM will be fine. 16 gigabytes is plenty for a game. But um, storage might be a problem. Because it's not even a full terabyte they're putting in the PS5 and that. Uh, I think the Xbox Series X is getting a terabyte, but the PS5 is getting like 825 gigabytes. Um, which, if Gran Turismo 7 is going to be a proper game, have all the tracks from GT Sport and even remastered the old tracks easily could hit 200 gigabytes I think could easily hit that no problem because right. of the sheer amount of like content that's going to be in Gran Turismo 7 Ah, oh, I'm so excited for it. Straight and long has been unlocked. Yeah, that's another um, golfing reference. Long shot. It's a long shot. Haha. <laughs> 4.1 miles for two laps. Let's do this. 20,000 credits available. We're going to be uh, grinding for quite a lot of money today. We're not aiming to buy anything. Um, we're more aiming to complete missions and just like finish off stuff. I think I'm going to do that really long championship as well. See how that goes. Oh, contact. Boom. Okay, cool. Ah, watch it, watch it. 
Awesome. No, 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 no. We're off the road. Get back on. Nice. And we go flying past. You love to see it. Oh no! We've been slipstreamed ourselves. Wow. I think I just brake checked the Mercedes, not gonna lie. <laughs> That's the one complaint I have about Gran Turismo 4 as well, is the AI cars love to brake check you. They just break way too early. And that's a good thing, but when you're slipstreaming them and they just break out of nowhere, it's like, ah, oh, didn't really like that that much. Nice. Go meow, straight past. Not a chance. a little bit of a uh, wall riding techniques that was a thing I did a lot in um, when I played this game when I was younger I'm trying to avoid wall riding because I used to do it all the time um, as sort of like an eight-year-old child you don't really play professionally as much obviously there are some people out there who are younger playing professionally but uh, I wasn't that kind of person I just played games for fun and I still do. But uh, I'm a lot better driver than I was. That's for sure. A whole lot better. That is awesome. Meow. Okay, slow down here. Turn left. Oh, very nice. Very nice hairpin drift there. I found the music has been really catchy and sort of made the video sort of much higher quality actually. Uh, I do like how there is music in videos, but again, there is a massive problem with that. Um, with the fact that I can't, you know, have music in every single game. Um, and sometimes I add music. Obviously, uh, the videos where I don't have myself talking. Um, one specifically, the Gran Turismo Sport videos I've been releasing lately. Uh, and the Gran Turismo PSP. So I'm not a Gran Turismo. Um... But those ones, I put music over those instead of me talking. But I can't do that with certain games because it's a little bit more difficult. A lot more editing. Hole in one has been unlocked. Okay, there's more than five races. Brilliant. I better get like some golf buggy or something like that after this. Some insane Easter egg car. Alright, 13,000 credits. And this is a... Oh! One lap. Sort of makes sense for the uh, title, Hole in One. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe. If you want to help support the channel, make sure to hit that join button or click on the merch link in the description. It would mean the world to me. And also, don't forget to check in the description for our other social links. We've got Twitter, Instagram, and Discord. So make sure to follow us over on there. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>